A major southern winter storm continuing on this Wednesday. Today, the Carolinas and Virginia in the bullseye before this thing pulls up the coast and could even bring winter weather into the northeast. Welcome in, everybody. Great to see you on this Wednesday. It has been a long week of tracking this thing, but today is finally the big day. We've got that snow working in to portions of North Carolina, Virginia. We had snowfall yesterday and overnight last night in Virginia uh, into portions of Kentucky, down towards uh, Tennessee, and then especially back into Missouri and Kansas, where we really saw some pretty good totals. Let me know if you were anyone that saw snow yesterday or overnight, how much you got. And if you're watching the Carolinas this morning, give me those reports. Is anything falling from the sky yet or are you still all dry now if you haven't already go ahead like the video hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for the latest notifications we're knocking on the doorstep of 40,000 subscribers uh, just crazy stuff to even think about but uh, if you want to help us get there and you're not already subscribed go ahead hit the button only need a couple hundred more and uh, we'll be there uh, also do want to say thank you to our channel members appreciate everyone that has joined if you would like to join you can hit the giant join button next to the subscribe button and uh, it kind of comes with a uh, cool perks so you can check out down there all right folks uh, with that said let's go ahead and start diving into the data a lot to discuss today including kind of uh, an evolving setup with today's storm now next to me this is satellite loop you can see that kind of uh, big storm system down here into the Carolinas, into Georgia, even Alabama, beginning to amplify. And we've got very tall, strong thunderstorms down here in the Gulf of Mexico. And as a forecaster, that tells me a couple of things. One, uh, the storm is definitely beefy, but two, that could be problematic for snow lovers uh, into the western Carolinas. Uh, basically, what's happening is all these thunderstorms are kind of stealing the water from the atmosphere. So all that transport from the Gulf of Mexico, it's like it's hitting a brick wall, and that's preventing it from continuing upwards into uh, upstate South Carolina, back out towards Western North Carolina, and leading to uh, concerns, the same concerns we've had for the past couple of days, that maybe we wouldn't quite get enough precipitation for big snow that way. Now, there is good news within this, though. That's just for today. Come tomorrow, a completely different kind of little setup moves through that I think is going to get those folks back in on the fun, even if you don't see a lot today, could at least get maybe even an inch or so tomorrow, and we'll talk about that setup in today's video. But let's take a look at current radar imagery. I mean, the snow's definitely fallen. We had snow in Chattanooga, areas of eastern Tennessee definitely overperformed uh, this morning from this little band of snow. We've even had some wintry mix back as far as south as Huntsville. I know I've had a couple of viewers out that way kind of asking about Huntsville definitely let me know how much snow you got but this big shield of kind of mess moving out towards the Carolinas now and I want you to notice see this little area of new shower activity down into southeastern North Carolina that is the start of our transfer of energy we've got this big upper level low up here we've got big low pressure down into the Gulf and then this new area of low pressure going to develop right along the Outer Banks in North Carolina and that's going to really fill in the radar presentation here kind of in the circled area from Richmond Virginia Beach uh, Newport News, Norfolk, back down into Elizabeth City, and over towards the Triangle, going to really start to get in on some heavier precipitation rates by this afternoon, and uh, that'll definitely be something that we see kind of fill in on radar. Now, let's take a look at those current alerts out there. Obviously, uh, you know, you would expect some of them, and we definitely have some winter storm warnings in the pink, winter weather advisories in the purple, uh, and uh, I'll tell you folks, I've been kind of mentioning this, we don't have blizzard warnings currently, at least in the east, however, However, I would not be totally shocked if we at least get blizzard light conditions here into southeastern Virginia, northeast North Carolina, places like Norfolk, Virginia Beach, Elizabeth City, back out towards Franklin, Virginia, uh, that kind of corridor in there. I think it's definitely going to at least have some blowing wind and snow. So it might not hit the textbook definition of blizzard, but uh, it's going to feel like it for sure, I think, for a lot of folks. And then you got to see where the winter storm warnings are confined here into Virginia and North Carolina, and then back out where we had snow over in Kentucky. A little bit of a gap in between. That's where that dry slot is setting up that we're kind of worried about will maybe limit snowfall totals, and that's what makes it such a tough forecast for a lot of folks in Charlotte, up towards Lake Norman, back over towards Hickory, Gastonia, Shelby, uh, area is in there just a really tough forecast today but I think an easier one for tomorrow morning like I said we'll definitely break it down and let's start with our favorite map the upper level map here is our 500 millibar vorticity map from the NAM model or the North American model whatever uh, floats your boat here but um, the storm system again a lot of different components this is this afternoon and two pieces I want you to notice uh, we've got uh, this big upper level energy over Minnesota and Iowa and then we have kind of our coastal energy showing up in this more uh, kind of ribboned out banding over the Carolinas Georgia and even the Florida 
Florida Panhandle. So a couple days ago, it looked like a big storm riding up the coast, bringing huge snow to the northeast. Not the case anymore, although we will see some winter weather up there. The reason for it is the separation between these two. We've got this southern stream energy. Unfortunately, though, it kind of outran our northern stream energy. So we've got a big gap between the two in between, and that's preventing this thing from becoming a big bomb cyclone up the coast. Now, it will still bomb out, just not... Um, kind of as close to shore as snow lovers would maybe like to see. That's the bad news. The kind of good news with this, though, is instead of one storm, we're going to kind of get two storms out of it. So I'll move it ahead into time on our map. And you see all that vortice along the Carolina coast moves through this afternoon, evening. That's going to bring the heavy snow. But then our big upper level piece of energy moves through. This is tomorrow morning, folks. I mean, this is a lot of lift associated with this getting down into the Carolinas, into Virginia, uh, and even up further into the Northeast. And this is going to produce an area of snow shower. So tomorrow, I think especially in the morning, but even potentially into the afternoon, kind of a snow shower day from Charlotte to Raleigh. Heck, maybe as far south as Columbia and into the upstate could get some snow showers out of this thing and then into Virginia as well. And you'll see that in a moment as we look ahead on our surface map, but definitely kind of a one-two punch with this storm. And then they finally connect and we get this big coastal storm. And should they merge just soon enough, we could even get a band of snow through portions of the Northeast. Before we get there, though, let's go ahead and time out the storm for today. This is the latest high-resolution rapid refresh model. I think kind of an all-right middle-of-the-road assessment right now on the storm. There are some models that show higher-end snow, some models that show lower-end snow. But I'm going to show you this one. I think it's kind of the most likely scenario at this point between today and tomorrow's snow event. All right, so this is basically by the time that this video is getting released, a little bit uh, after the fact for those folks just uh, kind of watching the video an hour or two later, uh, we've got snow again up into Virginia, West Virginia, and then notice we've got this gap, but then it starts to fill back in. So can we fill in all of this area? Can we get snow to fall from Charlotte all the way up to Raleigh, back out towards even maybe Shelby, Gastonia? That'll be the question, but I think the most likely area to definitely fill in the radar is up here in this circle. Northeastern North Carolina, Southeast Virginia, that's always kind of been the bullseye for the past couple of days. That hasn't changed, and then the forecast remains very complicated and kind of uncertain in this little yellow extension. Do we get enough precip to get back in there today to get some snow or ice or whatever may be falling from the sky? The herb here, this model... Uh, shows it filling in a little bit, uh, but it's just kind of tough. Now, another thing some of the models are hinting at is maybe almost two areas that it fills in. You've got the leftover energy from yesterday. That could maybe get some snow out towards Shelby, uh, Lincolnton, up towards uh, kind of the... Um, the triad there, and then you get the other area from the surface low, that gets snow into eastern North Carolina, and it's very possible areas like Charlotte, Concord are kind of in, uh, in that zone between that just nothing's falling from the sky. Uh, that's one possibility. Another possibility is all this area fills in and Charlotte gets a good inch of snow today out of this thing. Uh, and then the third possibility is this kind of back end energy over here just doesn't even happen and everything is just this big blob you see back out into eastern North Carolina and southeastern Virginia. Uh, those are the three possibilities today. Now, which one happens? I mean, honestly, folks, it's the morning of and still your guess is as good as mine. So uh, we'll see. I I think it's going to be this, though, kind of that in-between where it's not uh, completely dry, but uh, not very good and not likely to see a lot of accumulation today, I-77 westbound. Now, east of there, higher in chances for accumulating uh, significant winter weather. Now, into this evening, this is when things start really getting rocking and rolling. And again, you can still see this back in band of snow trying to build back into Charlotte. I mean, as someone who lives in Charlotte and is getting questions from people in Charlotte on the forecast, I'll tell you, this is a nightmare as a forecaster uh, to, try, to try to pin down. But... Um, you get the point for all the reasons I just mentioned. However, though, this evening, do, uh, back up towards Newport News, Virginia Beach, Franklin, uh, Virginia, into Elizabeth City, uh, areas back towards Rocky Mount, rocking and rolling with a winter storm. Now, the further north you are, the more likely to get uh, pretty good winter weather, meaning snowfall. The further south, the more of that wintry mix and then freezing rain. Same problem for kind of uh, the Raleigh area. Wake County, the southern half of the county, going to probably be a wintry mix. You go up north towards Durham, and the closer you get towards Virginia, more likely to see periods of heavy snow throughout the afternoon and evening tonight that will begin to accumulate pretty quickly. And then you can see the storm kind of pulls away, keeps on going. This is crossing the midnight hour and radar still trying to fill back in at this point. Check it out. It's at this point that the storm begins to merge with the upper level energy a little bit. And Charlotte, you're probably sitting here at this point. It's two in the morning. You stayed up all day waiting for snow. It never happened. Uh, and then you get this combination of energy to combine and uh, check out what happens. Radar fills in in a big way. This is rush hour tomorrow morning. 
Um, folks, if you live in the Charlotte area and you had school canceled today, I'm pretty sure uh, Charlotte Mecklenburg did, and it doesn't snow, I can already see the comments. I can already see the people saying, well, they have no idea what they're talking about. Why did they cancel today? And then you wake up tomorrow and you find out they canceled again, and then you're really mad because you're thinking it didn't snow yesterday. Now they're canceling again for no reason. This is the reason. And temperatures will be well down into the 20s at this point tomorrow morning. So whatever falls from the sky is going to stick pretty easily, potentially even onto roadways if we can get heavy enough rates. And I'll tell you, looking at this, this is a good light to moderate band of snow. It starts, let's say, it really starts getting going maybe as early as you know 3 a.m. in Charlotte uh, up towards the triad and then keeps going all the way through about the noon hour. So that could be a couple of hours of some snow that could accumulate up to maybe an inch a couple places, maybe two inches if you get some heavier rates out of it. And you can see that swings all the way through the Carolinas, maybe even Columbia. Greenville Spartanburg could get some snow out of that tomorrow morning. Heck, tries to get all the way to the Outer Banks, seeing some snow. And even the Myrtle Beach area, or at least inland areas up into the PD, could see some flakes fly Thursday afternoon. And uh, even snow squall action coming off of the uh, mountains there of West Virginia. And then we finally clear out by, I'd say, overnight tomorrow into Friday. So what does all of this mean? I just showed you a bunch of maps. What does this actually mean on the ground? This is the forecast from the National Weather Service. Doing a pretty good job at showing this, I think. You've got that ice signal back towards Greenville, Jacksonville, Fayetteville. That's where we're going to see a tenth of an inch, uh, tenth of an inch, excuse me, to a quarter of an inch. But I do think there will be a pocket kind of in between the three that we get a quarter of an inch to half an inch of ice. And that's what we'll need to watch for, uh, the potential of real ice storm conditions compared to more uh, of not a nuisance, probably even more than a nuisance, a tenth of an inch, definitely enough to cause pretty big roadway problems there in Fayetteville, Jacksonville, uh, but definitely back up towards the Greenville, North Carolina area is where I would watch for ice storm uh, likelihood to begin to increase. Raleigh, notice how this ice line is right against you, basically right over the city. This shifts north just a little bit and what could be a good two to four inch snow sleep fest turns into uh, more of a freezing rain event. It shifts south a little bit and what is currently a wintry mix of a couple of inches could turn into higher end snow. Again, just a tough forecast for really anyone in North Carolina today. And these are just some of the challenges we are facing even the day of. Goes to show we got a long way to go here uh, in weather forecasting. Now, snowfall forecast from the NWS. Uh, I absolutely buy this area up near Virginia Beach, even into the tide water in the southern Chesapeake. I think double digit snowfall not going to be that hard to come by in that region. Uh, it gets a little bit tougher down towards Elizabeth City. That's where we could be mixing with some sleet at times. Uh, so that could cut down on your totals, maybe closer to five, six inches. But up towards Virginia Beach, that area, uh, I'm pretty confident on double-digit snowfall. And then, uh, like I said, up here into the Tidewater, uh, in, even up into portions of uh, kind of Richmond, seeing a couple inches of snow back up towards Delaware. We'll get to that map in a second. Southern half of the state could see a couple of inches as well. Raleigh, Greensboro, both probably in that two-inch range. Now, this is including today and tomorrow morning. So remember, this is today's snow is going to fall, and then the burst of snow tomorrow morning uh, I think Greensboro and Raleigh are probably going to be pretty similar in totals. Now, if I had to guess, I'd say Raleigh's a little bit higher. I'd say more like two, three inches. Greensboro, I like about two inches for a forecast. Danville, a little bit further north, might be closer to four. Same thing for Roanoke. But watch back down here, Charlotte Hickory. Again, it very well may not snow here today, okay? Do not lose hope, though, because tomorrow morning, that secondary burst of snow, I think, drops half an inch, an inch plus in uh, a lot of places. Again, you get these little banding features that maybe are a little more potent. We could hit two inches of snow somewhere tomorrow afternoon, and don't rule out slight accumulation as far south as the upstate or even into the Columbia area. Nothing on this map. Don't rule it out here, and you can see that as we move ahead and take a look at some model guidance. This is the latest high-resolution rapid refresh uh, ran not long ago showing that Potential. Again, notice the orientation of the snow here. See how it's kind of back like this? We've got an area, and you see how another area highlighted like this? These are the two separate areas of snowfall. Uh, this is today over here, uh, back here. This is, uh, again, pretty similar to the NWS forecast. This is tomorrow morning. So I'll just put a, a Thursday kind of icon in there. Uh, it's a complicated forecast, folks, and trying to communicate uh, this to you as the audience is tough, trust me. Um, but uh, it's not just today, it's also tomorrow. And you can kind of see the two separate areas. This model gets an inch and a half, almost two in Charlotte, closer to two up towards Lake Norman. Um, now, this area that has the higher total, it could shift this way a little bit, it could shift this way. Um, but I do think someone's going to pick up a good inch from tomorrow morning's event. And then out east, pretty much what we just said, this model more bullish on the Elizabeth City area, a little less uh, sleet, a little more snow. 
uh, and uh, gets that double-digit snowfall slightly further south and then more of half a foot, eight inches up towards Virginia Beach. Uh, what about the uh, kind of NAM model? Here's the NAM. Uh, the NAM a little more bullish on today's event uh, back out into Charlotte um, and then still has tomorrow mornings as well. Um, but uh, again, you can just you can kind of see the orientation of what's today and what's tomorrow. This is today where it's kind of uh, that uh, curved arc. And then where we've got these areas that get all the way back down south, that's from tomorrow's snow shower possibility. Could get a coating up to an inch in Greenville, Spartanburg, maybe even a coating down into the Columbia Metro, not out of the question. All right, let's move things up to the northeast. Unfortunately, again, not the big snow you were hoping for here, but I do think if we move this back, southern Delaware, uh, extreme southern Maryland here, and kind of down again towards the tidewater, snow starts this afternoon, and it lasts through the overnight. Uh, we're going to get some pretty good snow there, probably about half a foot a foot, that range, and then the storm pulls north, and you're not seeing a whole lot happen, but then we get that merging of energy and notice some snow tries to build back into maybe Jersey, Long Island. Looked a little bit better on last night's models, but... I'll tell you folks, it's such a complicated phasing process, it's not going to look exactly like this. So do not be shocked to get a band, uh, maybe a burst of snow somewhere in the circle from Jersey up to Long Island, Connecticut, Rhode Island, uh, and then especially the Cape. In fact, the Cape back out towards Nantucket could even get clipped by the storm itself here. Uh, see how close it is? It's just to your south. And then if that doesn't do it for you, look at some lake effect snow kind of feeding into the storm. If this sets up right, could really get uh, the Cape in on uh, heavy snowfall totals if, um, again, if the wind direction is at the right angle. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, snowfall totals up here from the National Weather Service, I think uh, doing an all right job. You can kind of see they're a little more excited that this is going to clip the Cape. So heck, they've got nearly half a foot on Nantucket. They've got about three or four inches back into the vineyards. And then even Southern Jersey, you're trying to get uh, an inch or so out of this storm system back down towards Southern Delaware. We're talking, you know, three to six inches, same thing, back down into the tidewater. Not much elsewhere. Maybe some flakes fly into Pennsylvania throughout the day tomorrow as that upper level low swings through. And then you check out this lake effect band up here as well, obviously producing some pretty good snowfall. Uh, but uh, that is a wrap on the current storm. And uh, we're not going to talk about it again. Uh, quite frankly, I'm exhausted from talking about it. So uh, that's it. Uh, that's done. That's what we know right now. We'll see how the forecast pans out. Uh, but that's, that's what we've got. Uh, okay. Now, the cold air will be another problem. I did want to mention this. Uh, we're talking brutally Arctic outbreak over the next couple of days behind the storm system. This is this afternoon. Actually, well, this is this afternoon. Uh, we're talking temperatures 30 to 40, maybe even near 50 below what they should be this time of year. And... Um, that's something you're going to feel, obviously, if it's you know 50 degrees cooler than it should be, you're going to notice that. And it's just very cold air mass locks in and even shifts east. This is by Friday afternoon. So whatever snow and ice falls uh, today and even tomorrow, not going to immediately melt. The good news, late February, sun angle is going to do some work for us. Uh, but the air mass is much colder than average on its own. So that's going to kind of help to keep it compact, especially in the shaded areas. Uh, this snow and ice could hang around for quite some time. And you can see even through the weekend stays below average. Then a little burst of some heat maybe by next week tries to warm us up. Don't get too excited. Check what's on the way as we flip the calendar into March. Folks, just take a deep breath because it's not over. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, we're not done with winter. Uh, it feels like uh, the never-ending win never winter. Sure enough, that's exactly what the models are hinting at. Take a look at the latest European ensembles, folks. If you were tired of talking winter weather, I'm sorry. And uh, I'll be honest, I'm almost even a little tired of it. We've been going nonstop since really, uh, it feels like November. <laughs> but uh, watch what happens. So this is, let me back it up just to get this in perspective. This is right now, basically. Here's our big shot of cold air and storm system over the east. That's producing the snow, the ice, the craziness. Then through the weekend, we stay cold, but start to moderate a little bit by early next week. I think a day or two, Monday, Tuesday, in this time frame, we try to have some nicer weather, especially out west where you see that red. That's some ridging, warmer temperatures. And then check out what happens, folks. I mean, just a giant trough up here into the east, extending all the way down. This is another shot of cold air that could potentially, potentially, the key word, produce another storm system. Check it out. I mean, that's just, it's never ending, folks. We could we could be talking winter weather, winter storms, potential nor'easters, and I know people are going to comment, oh, it didn't happen this time, it's not happening next time. We'll see what happens. But uh, pattern looks active still to end out February and start March. Oh, boy, oh boy. So what, what, what a time period here. Um, I will go ahead and say, again, if you haven't already on the video, go ahead, hit the like button subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications. We definitely appreciate it. Again, getting close to 40,000. Awesome. About to leave Charlotte 
head up uh, north and east and cover this storm on the ground somewhere in northeast North Carolina, southeast Virginia. So I'll be live on YouTube probably this evening covering the storm in the conditions. Swing on by, say hi. Uh, also probably will not have a video tomorrow morning due to the fact that I'll be out there this evening and I am going to have to sleep at some point. Uh, but I'll definitely be back Friday morning at uh, the latest with another update. All right, folks, y'all have a great one. Stay warm, stay safe, and I'll see you all next time.